Next thing I want to tell my younger self, your younger self, is that another reason why you want to be profitable and charge the right number is so that you can hire people to replace you at what you're not very good at or what you don't like doing very much. Maybe you're not good at or love arithmetic. Maybe you don't love copywriting and sales writing, sales, operations, and managing your team. And so you're going to hire somebody as a bookkeeper, copywriter, somebody to be your marketing implementer, your marketing director, somebody who's going to sell better than you. And you're going to hire somebody who's going to be able to run operations in your workflow and actually lead your team. You're going to hire somebody who's going to replace you in that role. As long as you understand how all these things work, then you can hire the right person. But in order to do that, you have to have the profitability to do. So. I remember when I did everything myself. I was in the funeral business and my uncle uh, Mike passed away and they decided to have me do the funeral. And that was a big deal because first of all, I was young, 24 years old. Secondly, I was on the other side of town and you would normally have hired a funeral home on that side of town. And because they hired a funeral home on the all the way to the other side of town. There was 45, 50 cars at this funeral. And if you know anything about funerals, that's actually a pretty big funeral. And I swear I try to park every one of those cars myself because I wanted everything to be perfect. Yet we had four or five men there parking cars and they were just standing around looking at me running parking cars and enjoying the show. And finally, my uncle said, you hired those guys so that they could do their job and uh, you're not letting them do their job. You've got to let them do their job and then you do your job and if you try to do it for them you can't do your job which means the really important things that have to get done aren't getting done you've got to be the general and letting the people who run the business on the operation side do their job and I had to learn that as a young man and I will tell you I notice a lot of service providers that I've worked with through the years they find themselves not delegating and it's costing them a fortune I spoke to somebody at my golf club and they said how do you delegate because I don't understand how to delegate. And I asked them a couple of questions and came to the realization is I just don't trust they're going to get the work done as well as I'm going to get work done. And then I'm going to have to redo it. I go, hey, that's okay. But you got to decide. Are you going to keep it small and keep it all and you're not going to grow or are you going to grow and if you want to grow then you're going to have to learn to replace yourself in different roles. You can replace yourself in almost every role in your business and make it so that if you died tomorrow the business can continue to run without you. For many of you your younger self was very much running the business as if you were the only one that could do it and that means that if they were hit by a bus tomorrow the business would probably die because if you stop the business stops. So the key to a successful business is making it independent of you. The next thing I would tell my younger self or your younger self is that fear, false evidence appearing real, that's the acronym we use for fear, is standing your way of doing some things that you believe you either don't like doing or you're not good at doing. What I believe to be true is there might be some things you really say you don't like. I, I know a lot of service professionals say, I don't like numbers, I don't like the math, I don't like marketing. And that might be true, but I feel it's just because they're afraid that they may fail in that particular area so they don't want to take it on because because they're used to being right and perfect and great. And it's only because they don't know the truth about that particular job duty. You don't need to have that fear. You're a hardworking, highly intelligent individual that should not fear something new. As a matter of fact, I would love to challenge you to look at it as an opportunity, right? I, I know that you don't feel comfortable doing it, but uh, so I'll say this. Nino Quibain said it best years ago when he said, change for the timid is threatening. Change for the comfortable is frightening. Change for the confident is opportunity. So I challenge you to be comfortable with change and be comfortable with doing things that you don't really enjoy in your business. I believe that the only reason you don't enjoy it is because you don't have the knowledge of what it really is. And once you find out what it really is, you'll realize it's not that big of a deal and that you too can do it. So to my younger self, I would say embrace the change and embrace the suck. And it's okay if something sucks for a period of time, you'll get better at it, you'll figure that out. And then before you know it, you'll have systematized it and allow somebody else to do it for you and replace yourself in that role. But in the short term, make sure that you try things you don't think you're good at or you don't think that you like in your business and learn all about them. Otherwise, you've left yourself an opportunity for a weakness and a threat of which you could really lose money. I'll tell you real quick, when we first started, we were into the event side of the business and I had somebody else running the events and I didn't believe I was good at it and I didn't believe I knew anything about it. I believe there, there was a knowledge base that I didn't have and I let somebody else do it and I trusted them to do it. And that year was a tough year. And I ended up taking it on the chin to about $240,000 after you consider 
the checks that I physically wrote to hotels for rooms that were never used. And it was all because I was afraid I thought somebody else had more experience and skill at this particular thing. And what I found is it really wasn't that complicated. I just had to learn it myself and then I had to go do it. And then once we understood the business, we could replace somebody to do what we were doing on our own. It's very hard to replace somebody or find somebody to do something that you don't know how to do personally because you don't know if they're getting it wrong. Here's the next piece of advice from my younger self or your younger self. And that's that high performance players, business people, they'll have coaches. Tiger Woods, as of this recording, still has a coach. All of the highest performing athletes that you can name still have a coach. Even though they're at the highest business people who are at their highest level, they too have coaches and consultants. So I highly recommend that you invest in a coach or consultant. I remember when I was going to hire Dan Kennedy, when I first launched this business, I was doing a couple hundred thousand dollars in sales and in some private consulting. And Dan's bill was $27,000, represented just north of 10% of my annual revenue. And it wasn't like a payment plan. You had to stroke the check. So I swallowed hard and I said yes. And I was scared to death when I did it, but I did it anyway. And it was the greatest decision I ever made because it put me on a path that I have had a coach from that point forward for the last, say, 15, 18 years. And I will tell you that when you're in the business, whether you're a coach or a consultant yourself, or you're in the legal services business, or you're a professional service business of any kind, you should have a coach or consultant that is sticking with you and helping you hold yourself accountable. And even better, if you're in a peer group where your peers can hold you accountable, I highly recommend you find a program like that because that's what will help you grow. Let somebody else hold you accountable to what it is you need to accomplish. You'll get more done faster. I always knew this next piece inherently I guess over the last 25 years I've learned it but I wish I would have told my younger self like in my early 20s your number one asset is your list and your relationship with it your audience and your relationship with it years ago before the internet there was obviously the yellow pages and TV and billboards it was really about building your audience building your community and getting referrals by being good at what you do and getting out there in the community and going to church dinners and church picnics and rotary club and civic organizations right that was all about really building your list in an old fashioned way my grandfather the way he built that list is he had like little drawers in the basement of the funeral home and it was like the Dewey Decimal System with index cards and he had everybody's name on those cards and he had drawer upon drawer thousands of people he had files on people he met people that he admired people that were in his community and he kept little notes he would know who their kids were and when their anniversary was and when their birthday was and he would send out birthday cards anniversary cards and he would make sure he stayed in touch with his community and that's really how he built his business and today, the modern day version of that is building an audience online and giving information to people that see value in what it is you have to say and building a tribe of people that want to continue to consume information from you and when they're ready to purchase, make a purchasing decision. And so that's what building an audience is all about. And that's the position you want to get to as a professional service provider. You want to have a list of people who consume your information and that when they're ready for make a buying decision, you're the first one to think about or when you have a new offer you can put it out there building your list is the first thing that you should do get an audience first and then everything becomes that much easier this piece of advice to myself or to your younger self is about hard work don't confuse action or activity with accomplishment I believe action kills fear and I believe we should take action because it keeps us moving in the right direction but some people confuse just work and doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results and that as we know is a definition of insanity right and so hard work is necessary. Many of you are working hard to serve your clients, to produce the widget, to be the education, to provide the service. And while there's a need in there, you need to be working equally as hard at working on the business, working on the marketing, working on the sales. So working on the client attraction pipeline, working on the workflow pipeline, working on the profit pipeline, working on the talent pipeline, and perfecting these systems that build your business. Here's the problem. People are promising you something that's fast, easy, and guaranteed. If you've been around for a minute, that's not true, right? Being in business for yourself is slow, it's hard work, and there's no guarantees. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and build your own business, paying attention to the hard work that you do and what you do it on is very important. At the end of the day, if you're not working on a plan to move your business forward, you're not moving your business forward. And so while there's a certain amount of morning routine that has value, my number one thing I would tell you to do is get to work on your business every single day. 
day. You have to work hard on the things that are gonna move your business and move the needle of your business, and that is working on the business, not in the business. And that's the next thing we wanna talk about to my younger self and to your younger self, is this idea that Napoleon Hill talked about think and grow rich. What you think about, you bring about. You need to pay real attention to the way that you talk, because that's a direct reflection on the way that you think subconsciously. So pay attention to the words that you use, pay attention to your positive versus negative affirmations, pay attention to the people you surround yourself with. They're not happy about you growing out of who you were into who you are going to become. It's interesting, even one of the greatest teachers in the world, Jesus of Nazareth, when he went home and started preaching there, he wasn't accepted there. And that happens oftentimes because they knew you when and they don't give you the credibility. And so hanging around the people that knew you when, as you grow and you grow up, they're not gonna give you the credibility you think you deserve. Some will, but vast majority of them won't. The reality is 98% of the people in the world don't have what it takes. They're not willing to go the extra mile. They're not willing to put in the work. They're not willing to be their own boss. I call them civilians. It's fine, they're great people, but they haven't chose to take control of their own life and really move the needle. And so you wanna make sure you're thinking clearly because it makes a difference of whether you're gonna achieve your goals or not. If you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. And just know that the way that you think has an awful lot to do with who you spend your time with. So make sure you're spending your time with the right people. Make sure you're filling your brain with the right books. Make sure you're listening to the right podcasts. Turn off the radio, turn on Automobile University. Make sure that you plug into a peer group and you get a coach, have somebody to hold you accountable to the way that you think and the way that you talk. Because if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. I've spent almost 40 years now working on myself, working at self-education from Earl Nightingale, Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, Trisha Fripp, Les Brown, and on and on. I was listening to those things from 19 forward. So it's been a long time. I've been filling my head with this stuff and I pay real close attention to how I was raised with. Let's talk about embracing the uncertainties. Entrepreneurship, business ownership is not a certainty. It's an uncertainty. Everything that you do, the marketing that you create is uncertain as to whether it's gonna work. You're gonna have to test it and you're gonna get it wrong before you get it right. So there's a lot of uncertainty, no matter how much people try to tell you how to do things, Things. You're gonna have this curiosity. You don't wanna try it, go down a path that somebody else hasn't gone before and feel like you're pioneering. You're gonna feel like you don't wanna just do what everybody else has done. And so there's just a certain amount of uncertainty that you need to embrace as a business owner. Business is all about moving forward every step of the way and realizing there is no such thing. You get to a point where you have a certain amount known, but then at some point that known will change or break because that's just how life and business goes. And then you have to get back into the uncertainty all over again. That that's business. There will always be a constraint. There will always be something that's standing your way that's new and different than wasn't there before. So as long as you're in business, there will be new challenges and new things that you have to overcome. And hopefully you will live below your means and your bank account will take care of itself. And so you will never be uncertain about your financial future because you know that you will spend less than you make. My suggestion to you as a younger person or your younger self is embrace the uncertainty. If you can learn to do that at an early age, you're going to find yourself much better off than you would have had you tried to fight the fact that it's uncertain and try to get it all perfect.